Hello everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. Today starts two new things that I'm going to be trying with this channel. One is an ongoing series that features items that I backed on Kickstarter because if I back them, if I believe in them, I feel like I should let people know about them. And some of these things, as you know, if you've ever backed Kickstarter, some of you may know that some of these things will be available for sale after the Kickstarter succeeds. Other things are only available as the Kickstarter, so if you didn't get in on it, you may not get to see it, and this would give you a chance. Either way, I kind of thought it would be something cool, something new to do with the channel, doing like Kickstarter-backed product, which is what this is. The second thing that I want to start doing is me and Uncle Britt may start doing videos of, like, gaming. And no, the, the, the channel isn't turning into a gaming channel, but one of the things, one of the advantages I have of being a small channel like this is that I'm not really beholden to the algorithm like the larger channels are. And I've said before that I don't play well with the algorithm, and this is just an example of it, that... I kind of want to do some different things here and there. So you may see us playing this in the future because this is Alter Realm of the Gods by Red Joker. This is a deck building card game. Not really a collectible because pretty much all the cards that you need are in this box set. And I really prefer games like that. Like... Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, things like that, where you have to go and track down cards and buy packs. I understand the appeal to that. I understand why those games have such a huge fan base. But I really prefer things like this, where everything you need is right here in the box. And if there are expansion packs, everything you need is in these expansion packs. And you don't have to go hunt anything down. So that brings us to this. This was a Kickstarter that I backed actually backed it last year and it um, succeeded, met its funding goal, and we have it in hand already, which is kind of amazing for a Kickstarter. Like I said, the company is Red Joker. I believe this is a uh, France-based, um, a French company. I will put links to their sales site for this in the description below if this is something you would be interested in this is everything that i got this is almost everything that i got let me for, let me put it that way that going along with this is supposed to be a textile play mat but there were issues with that that when they came in they sent them back to the factory they're getting them reprinted they're getting them redone so but what we have is the game in its completion and i did the all-in backing for this which gives us the main core game. It gives us the Pilgrim's Road expansion pack. It gives us the One Must Prevail expansion pack, and then all of the Deity expansion packs. What the, what the gist of this game is, you're basically gods warring with each other. And I dig that. I really get behind that. So... We're going to take a look at this. And first of all, look at the artwork for this. Like, I really love the artwork of this game. This is just the front of the box, but once we open it up and you take a look at some of the god cards, it is actually really impressive, the artwork that they did. This also, it's a very heavy stock cardboard box with a magnetic flap. I always love a magnetic flap like that. And it's a very solid magnetic flap, too. So we just pop this open, flip it open. There's more artwork, <laughs> sort of like a map of the realm. This deity, the, the, the gods that come with the box set, is just a made-up pantheon. This is one that they made up for this game. We have some quick references, quick reference rules on the inside flaps. And these are the gods. This is what's called a god realm, these large cards. And you have slots over here for your altars and your shrine, which once we get into the actual play, we'll explain what that is. But each god realm here represents a god, and they have different powers. There are five in the box set. And here we have the god of light, 
Paladins count as two rituals or two pentagrams when used in rituals, protection against demons and seers. And one of the interesting things about this is to like create the shrines, you have to basically any card you have that has like this inverted, this upside down pentagram right here, you basically take those cards and sacrifice them <laughs> to create a shrine. So this is the God of Light. Here we have the ancient god, which is basically like the Zeus, the Odin, you know, the all-father gods right there. The ancient god, time softens everything. Always plays first, wins ties, protection against pagans. Now this says protection against pagans. This says protections against daemonesses and seers. Those are different types of playing cards, follower cards, that we'll see once we get to the deck. Here we have the goddess of love. Begins with an active altar. Once we get into the rules, you'll understand why that is... That's a big deal, that they start with an active altar. Protection against wizards, but then, because of how important begins with an active altar is, loses ties. And we'll explain ties once again once we get into the rules. God of War. Once again, just like I was saying, look at these... Look at the artwork on this. The artwork on this is astounding. I was a huge fan of the artwork. Like, the artwork was one of the things that caught my eye when I was first going over the Kickstarter. So we have the God of War, Peace is an Abnormality, Doubles Warrior Ability Value, Protection Against Warriors. Then we have the Goddess of Death, who you saw on the box. The Future of Life is in Death. Needs two rituals to build a shrine. That's important because remember how I said you can just discard ritual followers to create an altar? You typically have to have three that you can discard to build an altar. The Goddess of Death only requires two. That also is a big deal. Cannot perform rituals with clerics. And those are our five main gods right there. And once again, I don't mean to keep like harping on this, but like I want to go through and just like look at the art. These are beautiful. These are absolutely beautiful. He's what's on the front of the box. Goddess of Love with the big angel wings right there. The headdress. All of this looks fantastic. War. Death. Back to the God of Light. We have our rule book here. And then we have tokens, because every game like this has tokens. These are our shrine tokens. These are our altar tokens. That on the back here, these are inactive altars. And then once you activate them, you can see they have like little, you know, statues like the altar is in use. So that's really cool. One popped out. That annoys me. <laughs> but then we have our follower deck. And this is the deck that we will be drawing from during gameplay. And you can see you have an abomination right here. This symbol right here means that this card can be used as a free action. So we have Abominations. We have an Adventurer. Add one inactive altar to your realm. So this is like how you would add altars, is by finding the, the cards that let you do it. The Alchemist right here performed two actions this turn. Also, you can see this is a ritual card, and it can also be used as a free action. So you can use this as a free action, or you can use this to discard and create an altar. Or, I mean, discard for a shrine. Amazons right here. These are really interesting because it says right here, Warrior's ability has no effect on you or your realm. Your realm is the god cards that we were looking at. Like, this is actually called the god realm. That Like, it has the god on there, but it's like represents their whole realm. So what we have here is warrior ability has no effect on you or your realm, that this symbol right here means that they can worship you. And if you put them down next to your realm as an active worshiper, that's how these defense, uh, these defense abilities kick in. So that's pretty cool. And also we have the pentagram right here, which once again means that they can be discarded for a ritual to create shrines. But when you have a worshiper with a ritual, this actually counts as two ritual cards. And I know I'm all over the place with this, but once we get into the rules, that will actually make sense. So then we have Amazons. 
We have the assassin right here. Once again, look at the artwork on this. The artwork is fantastic. Bards, clerics, demonesses, deceiver. Some of these only have like one card. There's a fanatic. When performing a ritual, fanatic counts as two rituals. A healer. And all of these have like different abilities, just like any other deck building game. Take up to three priestesses from the discard pile and add them to your hand. Now, there we have the merchant, the necromancers, the pagans, the paladins. Add exactly two inactive altars to your realm whenever you play them. Now, the priestesses here. This is interesting, because one of the ways to win, if we look back at the realm card, one of the ways to win is that you have all of your altars filled, and you have all four active altars. Okay? And the game is for two to five players, as is. There are expansion pack rules that can up that to six players, which we're going to be taking a look at in a second here. But as is, it's made for two to five players, and one of the routes to winning is have four active altars. Now, you saw cards that can um, gain you altars throughout gameplay, but only the priestess cards, you can only use the priestess cards as a free action to activate the altars. Remember I showed you the tokens have an active or an inactive and an active side? You can use the priestess cards to activate the altars, but the thing is, there are never enough priestess cards for the entire, for everybody playing the game to activate the altars. So there are other routes to victory. The altars are the most obvious ones, but there's never enough of these in the deck that everybody can activate them. And I think that's pretty cool because depending on how many people are playing the game, that's how many priestess cards you actually take out of the deck. Then we have profits. Choose any number of cards from your hand and replace as many from the followers deck. So this is, man, this artwork is just astounding. Like, I don't mean to keep harping on it, but like, I really dig the artwork on this. So this is one of the things that I really love about this, that everything you need is right here. You buy it in the box set, it's ready to go. All of your cards, everything you need. Because when I first saw this, when I first saw this, I was wondering how this played out. Because a lot of these expansion packs are just more god realms right here. That I thought it was Pantheon against Pantheon. And you totally can do that. Like, you can have people playing like cards from the base pantheon and then have other people going against you with other pantheons and we'll take a look at that in a second but i really like it's just basically god against god and that's like i dig stuff like that i am very much into into that so let me put this back here and this right here is our rule book that the rules are fairly straightforward Honestly, like, the rules are pretty much straightforward. Like, this just tells you how to set up the game. This tells you what the different cards do. It explains the breakdown of the turn. And that's basically it. Like, basically, you just need to do what the cards tell you to do on your turn. And it's a fairly straightforward game with multiple paths to victory. And I, I like that. Like, I like games that are, like easy to wrap your head around, but at the same time, there's depth to them. And this, I feel, definitely meets that criteria. Now, when I went all in, I got all of the expansions that they made at the time of recording. These are all of the expansions that are available. All of these are also up for sale. Once again, I will link you to all of this in the description below. One of the first expansions that I picked up or that I wanted was this. This is the Pilgrim's Road. And this adds a, basically, expansion rules for it. So we had five God Realms in the box set. The Pilgrim's Road, let's pull this out, adds two more right here. That we have the God of Dreams, 
each turn copy another god's ability that weren't copied the previous turn. So that's pretty impressive that he can just like grab the abilities of other gods as he sees fit. He just can't take two in a row. Okay. And then we have the goddess of blood right here. And look at that. Like, I almost want this as a piece of art to hang... Not almost. I do want this as a piece of art to, like, hang up on the wall. This is awesome. This is really awesome. Goddess of blood. Blood means life and also death. Can use priestesses for rituals. No limit on the number of shrines built. And then right here in blue, can use twins for mass altar activation. The twins are in this. It also gives you new cards to add to your followers deck, along with more tokens that you would need now that you have more gods to include. So there's a total of seven gods now with the base game. That's important because every other expansion pack Pantheon comes with seven gods. But I really dig that. That is some beautiful artwork right there. And basically what Pilgrim's Road does, and when me and Uncle Britt play, we will be using the Pilgrim's Road rules. But basically what it does is it gives you new cards, it gives you new gods, but it also includes things called Pilgrims that are basically Pilgrims that come to your God realm to worship. And we will get into that whenever we play through. It's not a huge expansion. The rules aren't that complicated, but what it adds to it, and we're going to be playing with the Pilgrim rules, like I said, what it adds to it are pretty, pretty incredible. Um, it adds sort of like a wild card element to it, and you'll see, you'll see why when we play. Now, the rest of the Pantheons here, first of all, we have real world Pantheons. We have one, two, three real world Pantheons, one pantheon that is basically the main reason I wanted to get all of these expansions, and then we have the One Will Prevail, which we'll talk about at the end of the end of this part of the video. Now, the Eternal Nile. Let's take a look at these. So with those expansions, basically you're just getting new god realms. There's no new cards to add to the deck. The only one that adds cards to the deck is Pilgrim's Road right here. So these don't add new cards, they just give you new god realms, new artwork. Like we have Anuket, and I'm going to pronounce these wrong, I know I am. Anuket, protector of the cataracts, can use priestesses for rituals, abominations, effects last for two rounds instead of one. Nomads, effects last for two rounds instead of one. This is something that anything that's in blue right here, like whenever you see these for the god realms right here, any bonus that's in blue means that this relates to the Pilgrim's Road expansion pack. So if you don't have the Pilgrim's Road expansion pack, you're not going to be able to make full use of the rest of these, these, these Pantheon expansion packs. So we have Anuket. We have Set. Look at that. That's just awesome. That is really cool. We have Set, Double Warrior's Abilities, Protection Against Warriors and Thief. Starts with a Warrior in hand. Cannot use Necromancers for Rituals. Osiris, the Allfather, that, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I wish I had a figure that looked like that. <laughs> Plays first, Paladins used in rituals counts as two rituals, start with a cleric in hand, loses ties, protection against Beastmaster. Anubis, this is, th th this is probably the one to me that's like least impressive of the Egyptian pantheons, and that's not a dig because he's still pretty impressive, and I love that he has the hyena right here. Anubis, ruler of the nine bows, needs two rituals to build a shrine, protection from demonesses, worship cards have one ritual value, keeps gravedigger in hand. Horus, check that out. Tell me that isn't cool. Tell me that is not cool. Adventurers add two inactive altars. Protection against seers and wizards. Starts with no altar. Cannot use prophets for rituals. Oh, and I forgot to show you that, like, on the back, they have different artwork for the pantheons. That, <laughs> there you have the, uh, a very fantasy version of the pyramids. So we have Horus. We have Isis, restorer of the souls. 
wins ties, starts with one active altar. Once again, that's a huge deal. Protection against pagans and tempters. Can use demigods for rituals. The only thing I don't like about this is I feel like Isis may be a little overpowered. That, you know, wins ties, starts with one active altar. The goddess of love from the basic one started with an inactive altar. But then she also had, like, a hindrance to even that out. Isis doesn't have that. Then we have Bastet. Each turn, copy another god's abilities that weren't copied in the previous turn. Big winged cat. And that is it for the gods of the Nile. Next up, we're going to take a look at the realms of Asgard. Thor Odinson, double warrior's abilities, starts with an Amazon in hand. Paladins have double ritual value. Can't use Amazons for rituals. Love the lightning around Mjolnir up there. Odin, the Allfather. Plays first, wins ties, starts with an active altar, protection against seers, can't have necromancers and shaman as uh, worshippers. He has the spear, Odin one eye, he has his two ravens, the only thing he's missing is like his goats on there somewhere. Hell, I love how the cape goes up and kind of looks like bat wings behind her. That is so cool. Oh, and on the back of it, we also have, you know... <laughs> Gladsheim, mid, yeah, Gladsheim, Asgard, basically. Need two rituals to build a, sh a shrine, can't use clerics for rituals, can trade pilgrimage from top of discard pile. Freya. Oh, that, she, like, looks like Valkyrie Plus. That's so cool. Sea Brightener, protection against wizards and pagans, abominations, effects last for two rounds instead of one, loses ties, protection against Beastmaster. Heimdall, look at that. Look at how cool that is. Look at that golden armor. Protection against demonesses and thief, deceivers, effects last for two rounds instead of one, pathfinders count as two rituals when used in rituals. Balder, the Shining Prince, can use priestesses for rituals, can build up to five shrines, starts with no altars. Occultist and druid have double ritual value. And then we have Loki, and that just looks cool. I know I keep talking about the art, but like the art on this is phenomenal. Each turn, copy another god's abilities that weren't copied the previous turn. And then we come back to Thor. So that is the gods of Asgard. Next up, the Heights of Olympus, and spoiler alert, this is the one that I'm pretty sure Uncle Brit is going to be using when we play. Okay, we got Zeus, King of the Gods, which you saw this on the front of the box. Plays first, wins ties, protection against wizards, can use Demigod for rituals. Then we got Aphrodite, very much... Like, I feel like a lot of the other gods were, like, stylized versions, but I feel like this is very much, like, what we think of when we see Aphrodite. Starts with an active altar, protection from pagans and tempter, loses ties, tyrants effects last for two rounds instead of one. Apollo, love the flaming wings. Everything about this, the coloring is fantastic, the art, once again, fantastic. Paladins used in rituals count as two rituals, protection against demonesses and seers. Starts with an oracle in hand, can't use oracles for rituals. Ares, classic Ares. God of War, double warrior's abilities, can use warriors for rituals, but not necromancers. Nomads' effects last for two rounds instead of one. Hades with Cerberus. This looks awesome. This looks really awesome, and I love the flaming staff that he has, the black cape. Cerberus has three heads. Looks fantastic. Hades, the unseen one, needs two rituals to build a shrine. Can't use clerics for rituals. Protection against beastmasters. Morpheus who, quite honestly, I completely forgot he was a, he was a <laughs> Greek god until I opened this pack up. Oh, and on the back here, we have a call, like, it's not the Colosseum, but, you know, I forget what that's called. <laughs> Each turn, copy another god's abilities that weren't copied in the previous turn, and then that takes us to Athena. Love the spear, love the armor. Could have used a little bit more armor, didn't need to expose the midriff, but could have given her a little bit more armor in there. 
can use priestesses for rituals, but no Amazons, can build up to five shrines, can use twins for mass altar activation, and then that takes us back to Zeus. Eldritch Horrors. Now this, this is the one that more than likely I'm going to be using. This is HP Lovecraft. This is the Cthulhu Pantheon. And this... I'm not going to lie, this was one of the main reasons I wanted to get the game, just so that I could battle with the gods of the Cthulhu Pantheon. Artwork, whoop, artwork on the back, we have that. And then we have all of the insanity that comes with this. Haster, Lord of the Interstellar Space. Paladins used in rituals count as two rituals. Protection against demonesses and seers. I can never pronounce that name. Naralathotep. Naralathotep, I believe. The Black Pharaoh. Double ability value of warriors. Protection against warriors. Shub Nigaroth. The Black Goat. Needs two rituals to build a shrine. Cannot perform rituals with clerics. The artwork for these guys is fantastic. That is just so cool. How he's built into a pyramid. And the tentacles coming up. Like just total madness. Eldritch horror. Love, love what they did with these. Then we have Aelith, the many mother, begins with an active altar, protection against wizards, loses ties. Once again, the red moon back there, the artwork, the branching, like hair looking like it's branching out into the trees. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Father Dagon, look at that monstrosity. Look at that madman. Can use priestesses for rituals. Rituals, no limit to the number of shrines built, can use twins for mass altar activation. Cthulhu himself, master of Ryleth, always plays first, wins ties, protection against pagans. There he is. There's the guy, Cthulhu. And I like how you have, like, for reference, this is a normal person, this is Cthulhu. Yog sothoth Yog sothoth <laughs> Opener of the way. Each turn copying other god's abilities that weren't copied in the previous turn. That is madness incarnate, and I love it. Once again, I would love to get a print of this to hang on the wall. And that takes us back around. So, like I said, all these expansions come with seven god realms. The box set itself comes with five god realms, but then the Pilgrim's Road gives you two more god realms for this, plus the new follower deck. So basically everything from this box set can be incorporated into the basic gameplay box set. So then the basic pantheon has seven gods, just like all of the expansions. And now we're going to take a look at the final expansion pack. So the last thing to take a look at here is One Must Prevail. Now this expansion pack gives you rules for solo play, what they call Alter Solitaire. And the rules for Solitaire are completely different from the rules for the main game. As a matter of fact, part of this video is going to be that once we're done looking at all of this, I'm going to go downstairs and we're going to play a game of Alter Solitaire to see how that plays out. Now what we have here is a new god realm. It is the god of chaos. Growth comes from chaos steals other gods' abilities by using Berserker cards. This is not one that is meant to be included with the basic game. This is a god that is off on his own. As a matter of fact, it looks like that you can play Alter Solitaire with pretty much any of the pantheons. We're going to be using the basic pantheon whenever we play at the end of this video, but he's not part of any one pantheon. He's just the one that you use whenever you're playing solo. Look at that Chaos Realm right there. So that is unique in and of itself. He also has these cards. These are Berserker cards, and these do not get included into the, um, the box set. These all stand on their own. These are for the Chaos God specifically. We have new tokens right here that each deity that you're playing against has, you know, different abilities that the Chaos God can steal, and these tokens represent those abilities. And then we have the rule book right here, that whenever you play, it's basically you against four other gods that are all on autopilot. I'm really curious to see how that plays out. Now, unlike Pilgrim's Road, 
none of the rules in this book affect the main game. Just like how you saw some of the god abilities require the Pilgrim's Road... Um, the, the, the What am I trying to say? The Pilgrim's Road expansion pack to make full use of them. Nothing requires this other than playing it on your own. So let's take this all downstairs. Let's get it on the table and let's see how Alter Solitaire plays out. Okay, so here we are down in the kitchen. I have the play area set up for Alter Solitaire. I apologize. I know the lights are a little harsh down here. This is the first time I'm trying this. And I'm already seeing maybe some things that I need to change about my setup down here if we're going to be doing this on a regular basis. So the first thing I want to say is that something I had said previously I was wrong about. We cannot use the Pilgrim's Road cards for the standard version of the game. So the 15 cards that come with the Pilgrim's Road, you can't add into the deck whenever you're playing Solitaire because the Solitaire version of the game does not use the Pilgrim's Road rules. That also means, unfortunately, that you can't use the gods that come with the Pilgrim's Road rules, which is kind of a disappointment to me because I would have loved to have had the Goddess of Blood in here. So what we have to play with is we have to choose four of the standard five gods from the basic box set. I don't even think we can really play this with any of the expansion pack pantheons because there are specific powers that you can pull, that you can steal from the gods. I'm sure if you put some time into it, you could, you could uh, come up with something, some custom rules, or fudge the other gods in here somehow. But for now, for the purpose of this, we're going to be using the standard gods from the basic box set. So what we have is the ancient god, the goddess of death, the goddess of love, and the god of war. And I, of course, have the god of chaos, the character, or the god realm that you always play whenever you're playing solitaire with his berserker cards right here. Now, something that's interesting to me is there's actually like three difficulty levels for this game. And the way that you set that up whenever you're setting up the play area is um, for easy, every god gets one active altar and two inactive altars already in their god realms. For medium, each god gets one shrine and two inactive altars. And for difficult, each god gets one shrine, one active altar, and two inactive altars. So just for the purpose of this, because it's really the first time we're playing through, and so that the, the game doesn't drag out for the purpose of this video, I have it set up for easy. So you can see that each god has two inactive altars and one active one in their god realm, except for the goddess of love over here. She has two active and one inactive. The reason for that being is one of her god realm abilities is begins with an active altar. So since everybody begins with an active altar, I flipped one of her inactives so that she actually starts with two active altars, thereby she still gains like the advantage of her god realm right here. Also, these tokens that are on the god realms represent the powers that the berserkers that follow the god of chaos, I don't know if that's going to focus in, <laughs> that the berserkers that follow the god of chaos can steal their powers throughout the game, thereby the god of chaos gets stronger as the game goes on while all of these gods get weaker. Because when you take these tokens and you steal their power, you gain their power and they lose it. So they get weaker, you get stronger, kind of puts you in the driver's seat of what's going to happen. So there are different phases of each turn. At the top of the phase, there's the draw phase where we draw the cards and then deal them out to the gods. And then there's the action phase where we play the action that is on the card. And then there's the construction phase where we build shrines and altars and activate altars. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw five cards. That is the draw phase. We go one, two, three, four, five. Now, after we draw five cards, we flip them over and we can take a look at what we have here. And we have the merchant right off the bat, which is a powerful card. Um, the Priestess, the Adventurer, the Healer, and the Paladin. 
So none of these are considered loyal followers of any of the God realms here. And I'll explain what a loyal, loyal follower of the God realm is once we come up with one. So I am actually going to keep the adventurer and we set that in the God realm. While the card is actually in the God realm, like it is right here, it's considered not drawn yet or inactive so that it can't be taken away if a card tells you to take away a card from a God's hand. Now, what we're supposed to do is from this point, we're supposed to deal these cards out as we see fit to the other God realms. But I like to keep a element of randomness in it. So the ancient God, he always plays first. So the ancient God will start, I'll go second, and then it goes clockwise, right? So what I like to do is take the top card, give it to the ancient God. Then going clockwise, the goddess of death gets a priestess card. The goddess of love would get the healer, which actually, let me check something real fast. Nope. And then the god of war would get a paladin. So there we go. So the god, the ancient god goes first. We pull the merchant card. Draw a number of cards equal to the number of gods in play. Keep one of them and deal one to each opposing god. So we set that down and we're going to draw five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. Now, since the ancient god is, for all intents and purposes, an NPC, we're going to deal them out just like we would have if the, um, just like we would have during the draw phase. So it's just going to go one, two, three, four, five. So now he has an adventurer. We play that. Add one inactive altar to your realm. So we set that into the discard and then he gets another inactive altar. So now all of his altars are filled up, but they're not all activated and he still needs a shrine. Now we come down here to the goddess of death. The cleric, demonesses and wizard abilities have no effect on you or your realm. Um, and then we have a priestess that lets her activate an altar. So we can only play one card. So this will go into her hand and we're going to play the priestess and we're going to activate an altar for her. So now what we have is this card is in her hand, which means she doesn't really get to play this card right now, but this card will come into play when we get into the construction phase of the game and you'll see how that plays out. Oop, wait. I did something, I mixed something up. First of all, let's put these back. Let's back everything up. <laughs> I went clockwise with the gameplay, that's my mistake. The ancient god does go first, but then the chaos god goes second. And from the two cards that I have, I have add one inactive altar to your realm, and the Amazon is a worshiper that she can defend you. Warrior's abilities have no effect on you or your realm. I'm gonna put the Amazon in my hand, I'm going to play the adventurer just like the ancient god did, and then I am going to add my first altar, my inactive altar, to my god realm, and now the goddess of death would play things out, and we'll play it out just like she did before. Pedantic, I know, but I wanted to try and keep things in order. So then after the goddess of death, we jump over here to the goddess of love, and she has the two cards. Take up to three priestess cards from the discard pile and add them to your hand. Or warrior ability has no effect on you or your realm. So those are the two that we have. Only one of them can be played. And I think we're going to play that one. And then we're going to stack that one into her hand. Once again, this really can't be played. The healer can't be played anymore, but it will come into effect whenever we get to the construction phase. Now we jump up here to the god of war. We have an abomination. Until the next turn, all opposing god abilities have no effect, which would have been cool, except he's the last in the line, so doesn't really matter. And then the paladin, if there is space at exactly two inactive altars to your realm, he does not have the room, so that's going to go into his hand, and we're just going to put this one here, not really as a worshiper, but just that like it's active and running right now. 
So now that takes us to the construction phase of our game, <laughs> of the turn. So there is a list of how the construction phase should go. The construction phase is also not optional. The ancient god has no cards, so he can't do anything right now. The goddess of death, however, um, one of the things, the first thing going down the line there is building shrines. There is placing and building inactive altars. And then the th final step is activating an inactive altar. So she can build a shrine because if you remember me saying worshipers that have a ritual actually count as two ritual and her ability is needs two ritual to build a shrine. So she can discard this card and now she has her shrine. We can put a shrine right there for her. I can do the same thing if I want to. Well, I do want to because once again, oh no, wait, I can't. I don't have that ability. Never mind. I will soon and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> so I can't do anything right now either. Now we come to the goddess of love and she has an Amazon that is a worshiper with a ritual symbol, which counts as two ritual. Plus she has another card in her hand with the ritual symbol. We discard those two cards and she gets her shrine. Everybody seems to be getting a shrine. So now we come up to the God of War and the God of War has one ritual card and one non-ritual card. And according to the special rules for Solitaire, one card without a ritual icon and one card with a ritual icon can be used to activate a shrine. So he discards both of these cards and we activate a shrine right there. So everybody kind of had movement. The goddess of death was able to build a shrine. The goddess of love was able to build a shrine. The god of war was able to enact, um, able to activate one of his altars. Only me and the ancient god, the god of chaos and the ancient god, weren't able to do anything. But the ancient god has his altars loaded up already. So he's, he's kind of... <laughs> He's kind of taken care of. Now we go back to the draw phase. We have five cards, right? Two, three, four, five. Yep. Flip these over. Let's see what we got. <laughs> we have a lot of priestesses. I am going to take the wizard card and then we go around the horn from the top going clockwise. The ancient god gets the paladin. The goddess of death gets a priestess. The goddess of love gets a priestess. The god of war gets a priestess. So, going to the ancient god first, the paladin. Um, if there is space and to add exactly two inactive altars to your realm, his altars are all filled up, so the card will go into his hand right there. Coming down to me, I chose the wizard. I love this card. Destroy one of their active altars. Choose a god, destroy one of their active altars, add one inactive to your realm. We're going to bank that card for right now because what I'm actually going to do is play one of my berserker cards. And what that is going to do is I am going to steal the goddess of death's ability so that I only need two ritual cards to build a shrine. She no longer has that ability. I stole that from her. Yeehaw. Now we go to the priestess. She will of course play the priestess and she will activate a altar. She only needs one inactive. She only needs to activate one, one more active altar. And she's basically one because she'll have all of the altars activated and she'll have her shrine. Then we take this priestess from the goddess of love and we flip that over and it's the same thing. She is only one active altar away from winning. And then the God of War plays his priestess and he activates his altar. So there is our draw phase. There is our action phase. Now we are into the construction phase. The ancient God can't do anything. The goddess of love can't do anything. Come down to me. I can take, now that I only need two ritual cards to build a shrine and the Amazon is a worshiper and a ritual. 
she counts as two ritual cards. I can discard that and I can get my shrine now. So at least that is out of the way because you need at least one shrine. You can have up to three shrines in your god realm so that in the event you... So in the event that two people fill up all of their altars, the shrines, who has the most shrines, will actually be the tiebreaker. So now we go to the goddess of love. She can't do anything. The god of war can't do anything either. That is that round. Go into another round. We go to the draw phase. One, two, three, four, five. Put those back. What do we have now? The wizard, the seer, the alchemist, the demoness, and the sorcerer. Hmm. I think I'm going to take the wizard again. And I think some of these cards are loyal followers. Yes, the seer is a loyal follower of the goddess of love. So the seer automatically goes to the goddess of love. The demoness is a loyal follower of the goddess of death. So the demoness card automatically goes to the goddess of death. And the sorcerer is a loyal follower of the ancient god. So he gets that card. And that means our remaining card, the alchemist, goes to the god of war. By the way, there is in the rule book, once again, I don't know if that's going to focus very well, but there is a chart that tells you this is what I reference it for mostly, to be honest, who has loyal followers and which ones they are. So now we play the sorcerer card. And what does this say? Until your next turn, all opposing worshiper cards in play have no effect. So we will set that there because that is a card that is in effect. None of these, none of us have worshipers though. <laughs> And then that comes down to me. Dis choose a god, destroy one of their active altars, and add one inactive altar to your realm. So this card is really going to help me put the goddess of death and the goddess of love on, on the back foot. So I'm going to play that card. I'm going to destroy one of death's active altars and give myself an inactive altar. So now I have two inactive and a shrine. I got to start activating some of these. Now we come down to death. Each opposing god with at least two cards in hand chooses and discards one of them. Take one of the discarded cards and add it to your hand. None of them have two cards in their hand. None of us have two cards in our hand. I don't think the Berserker cards count for in hand. But as part of the special rules, whenever the goddess of death plays a demoness card, she doesn't discard it. It goes into the hand. It would have gone into the hand anyway because she didn't get to play, but even if she would have been able to play it, she can put it into her hand right there. And as you saw, that counts towards the construction round of the game. Now we jump over to the Goddess of Love and we have the Seer. Look at their hand. Choose a god. Look at their hand of cards and choose one card. Add this card to your hand. So... Let me see something. Does the seer still get discarded? Um, no. So it doesn't look like the loyal followers get discarded when they're used. They go into the hand. So she is actually going to take... Because he's the only one with... Oh, wait. She could take mine too. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> She's going to take the paladin from the ancient god, and now she has two ritual cards over here. Okay, so that's her round. Now we come up to the god of war and perform two actions this round. He can't do that, <laughs> so that's just going to go into his hand right there. Construction round. Um, can't do anything. We're going to put this in the hand since it's inactive now. That's a ritual card. She can't do anything. I can't do anything. Can she? I don't think so. No, because she would need another ritual or a non-ritual card to do something at this point. And he can't do anything. So construction is right, right out. <laughs> so here we go. Five more cards. One, two, three, 
four, five. We have the alchemist. We have the warrior. We have a pagan. We have another demoness and we have another cleric. I'm actually going to choose the alchemist. And you'll see why in a second. Now we have the warrior, who is a loyal follower of the god of war. We have another demoness, who is a loyal follower of the goddess of death. And the pagan and the cleric, I don't think are... Nope. So the pagan will go to the ancient god, and the cleric will go to the god of love. So coming back up here to the ancient god, this is the action phase, we're going to play these. Choose a realm, destroy all its inactive altars. I am the only one <laughs> with inactive altars. So going clockwise, we go through all of the NPC gods first. At least this is how I do it. There's really no rule for how a card like this would get played. But this is how I go clockwise for through the NPC gods. And if they can't satisfy the card, then it comes to me, which means the ancient god just destroyed my two inactive altars. And I am on the back foot once again. But now it is my turn. The alchemist performed two actions this turn. We're going to discard that. The first action we're going to do is we're going to play another Berserker card. And we're going to steal the God of War's ability of protection against warriors. And then we're also going to play this wizard card. Destroy, Choose a god. Destroy one of their active altars. Add one inactive altar to your realm. So we're going to hit up the Goddess of Love, destroy one of her actives, and I'll get back at least one inactive on mine. Now we come down to the Demoness. Once again, each opposing god with at least two cards in hand chooses and discards one of them. Take one of the discarded cards and add it to your own hand. This goes back into, the, into Death's hand, and we can steal one of these from the god of love, goddess of love, and she now has a ritual card. Now we jump over to goddess of love. Demonesses and wizards' abilities have no effect on you or your realm. She's already protected against wizards. This would have been good to have before the goddess of love played, but que sera. Now we come up to the god of war, and this is our first warrior card, I believe. The opposing gods, all of us, the opposing gods choose to discard one card from their hand or in play. If there are no cards to discard, deactivate an altar. Now, I am not affected because I stole war's protection from warriors. So I, I'm good. I don't have to worry about this. However, war's other ability is... He doubles the warrior's ability. So each one of these has to give up at least two cards or deactivate two altars or any combination thereof. So the ancient god discards and his only active altar is inactive. The goddess of death will discard her two demoness cards. The goddess of love will discard her two cards. She had a worshiper and one in hand. I'm immune. I don't have anything to discard anyway. And so that means this goes back into war's hand. Now, had I... Um, let me see something here, because I think... Um, I think what would have happened, and I can't find the rule right now, but I think what would have happened is if I wouldn't have been protected from the warrior card, I think my shrine would have been destroyed in lieu of not having any cards. Um, I think that's how it played out. I'll have to find that rule, but for now, we're just going to keep on rolling. Now we come down to the construction round. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. Can they do something? One, one ritual, one non-ritual. 
If he had inactive alters, he would be able to activate with that, but he doesn't. So now we just go to the draw phase. Five cards here. What do we got? Uh, we have another warrior. We have a necromancer. We have the shaman. Another necromancer and an Amazon. I think I'm actually going to take the necromancer. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. The warrior, once again, goes to the god of war. And I don't think the shaman or any of these other cards. Nope. So, shaman to the ancient god, necromancer to the goddess of death, Amazon to the goddess of love, irony. Ancient god goes first. Pagans, seers, thief, and tempter abilities have no effect on you or your realm. That is a worship card. He's just going to hang out there, keep the ancient god safe. Now I go. Choose a non-free action card from the discard pile and add it to your hand. This ability is activated once the necromancer worships your god. So let's move my berserker cards over. The necromancer is going to worship the god of chaos which means we get to pull any non-free action card from the deck, and I'm pulling the wizard back and adding that to my hand. Now we come down here. This is the same thing. The Goddess of Death gets a Necromancer. Now for the NPC gods, the, the God Realm gods right here, I will put this down as a worshiper, but I will basically, for them, choose the first top card that is a non-free action, which happens to be this cleric that we're going to set right here. Which... No, let's not do that. That would be... That would be, <laughs> that would be bad. So, normally I would do that, but this is a cleric, and the Goddess of Death... Um, let's see here. No because she can't use clerics for construction. So that would be a waste and it would just sit there. So the first, th so that first card we'll say doesn't count and she'll take the seer, which gives her another ritual card anyway. And then we'll set that there. Um, do you see why I did that? I don't know if I explained it very well. <laughs> now we're gonna jump over to the goddess of love. She has an Amazon. Warrior's ability has no effect on you or your realm, which is going to come in handy because war is about to play his hand again. And here we go. The opposing gods choose to discard one card from their hand or in play. If there are no cards to discard, deactivate an altar. So we come up to the ancient god and he has a hand, he has a card in play. That's going to get discarded. He has no no altars to deactivate. Let me check the rules. Give me one second. I want to see what's supposed to happen in this instance. Okay, so I was right. It is, it destroys altars. So since the shaman was one and the effects of the god of war are doubled, we're going to destroy one of the ancient god's altars. That puts that over there. The, we come down to the goddess of death. And she has three cards that can be discarded. So we're going to get rid of these two right there. So those are discarded. I am protected. The goddess of love is protected. And this goes back into the god of war's hand because loyal followers don't get discarded. They go back into the hand, at least for solitaire. I don't know if that's true with the standard game. I really can't wait to get Uncle Britt on the other side of this table to play through this game. Now we're into the construction phase. Ancient God can't do anything. Goddess of Death can't do anything. I cannot do anything. Actually, no, wait, that's not true. I can because I only require two cards to build a shrine and this worship plus ritual 
counts as two ritual cards according to the basic rules. So we're going to discard that and we're going to get another shrine here just in case we come down to a tie, <laughs> the shrines will give me an edge. Okay. Now, her construction phase, she can't do anything either. Now up here, um, in the solitaire version, two cards without a ritual icon allow to place an inactive altar. So we can sacrifice the two warriors right here and put an inactive altar in the God of War's realm. So he just needs a shrine and to activate that and the God of War will have won. Ooh. <laughs> Come up on the draw phase. One, two, three, four, five. Set these back. What do we got? We have an adventurer. We have a paladin. We have an assassin. An assassin. <laughs> we have an assassin. We have the shaman. We have another warrior. Holy cow. I am so glad <laughs> I stole this ability. But I think I am going to take the paladin. And then that leaves us with an adventurer, an assassin, and a sh shaman. And the warrior, of course, goes back to the god of war. I may not have shuffled these very well, but now the adventurer goes to the ancient god, the assassin goes to the goddess of death, irony, and the shaman comes down to the goddess O oh, love. And I think that's... Yes. Yes. That's the only loyal follower that we have. So the god, uh, the ancient god goes first, add one inactive altar so he will get his inactive altar back that he lost in the previous round. But I feel like he's about to lose it again. Bigly. I play the Paladin. If there is space, add exactly two inactive altars to your realm. And boy, do I have space. So I can start filling up my altars right here and right here. Now we come down to death. Choose a worshiper card in play on an opposing god's realm. That god discards the chosen card. Return the assassin to your hand. So the only one that has a worshiper in play is the goddess of love. And taking away the Amazon that protects her against the warriors is really going to sting this round. And then the assassin goes back to death's hand. Then we come over to the goddess of love. She has the shaman. Pagans, seer, thief, and tempter abilities have no effect on you or your realm. That is a worshiper card. That's going to go here. Now we come up to war and we've seen this play out. The opposing gods choose to discard one card from their hand or in play. If there are no cards to discard, deactivate an altar. So the only thing the ancient god has is altars. So we're going to discard two altars get destroyed. We come down here to the goddess of death. These two cards both get discarded. We come down here to the goddess of love. I am protected. Woo, woo. <laughs> and we come down here to the goddess of love. One card is discarded. One altar is deactivated. And then the loyal follower returns to his hand. That is the action phase. Now we come to the construction phase. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. He, on the other hand, he has one ritual card and one non-ritual card in solitaire. That allows the god to activate a shrine or an altar. So all he needs now is a shrine and he's one which is ironic because i think he was the one that was lagging through most of the game i need one more altar and then to activate all of them so we're going to do this it's the draw phase two three four one two three four five put those back flip these over and take a look okay All right, so we have a cleric, a seer, a priestess, an abomination, and another priestess. I am going to take one of the priestesses. The abomination 
is a loyal follower of the ancient god, the seer, I believe. I know we've done this before, but I believe, yes, the seer is a loyal follower of the goddess of love. So then the cleric goes to the goddess of death and the priestess goes to the war god. It should have been the other way around, but going by the way that I've been playing it, that's how it falls. <laughs> so we come to the abomination. The abomination is one that can make you sweat because it's only like, it's just one card. <laughs> but until your next turn, all opposing God abilities have no effect. So none of these effects are in play right now. But this round, looking at the cards, I don't think it's really gonna matter. So we're gonna set that there, that that card is in play. I'm going to play my priestess. Actually, no. I'm going to put my priestess in my hand, and then I am going to play my wizard, choose a god, destroy one of their active altars, and add one inactive altar to your realm. So I'm playing that card. I'm destroying one of war's active altars, and I'm turning it into my inactive. So I now have all of the altars that I need, plus the shrine, I just need to activate all of these to win the game. So now we jump to the goddess of death. Demonesses and wizards' abilities have no effect on you or your realm. That's going to be a worship card. That card is in play. The seer. Choose a god. Look at their hand of cards and choose one card. Add this card to your hand. Okay, so starting up top. I'm the only one with a card in hand because we have a worshiper. Well, and we have one active. I don't know if these are considered in hand or not. I don't think so. I think they actually mean like what would be in your hand. Yeah, look at their hand of cards and choose one card. Add this to your hand. <sighs> so the seer, loyal follower, goes back. And she gets my priestess, since I'm the only one with cards in hand. Skadoosh. Hmm. That is annoying. <laughs> I thought I was on a roll. I thought I was on to something here. And then the war god has a seer, or a priestess, but no altars to activate, so that's going to go into his hand. Now we go to the construction phase. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. Definitely can't do anything. One ritual, one non-ritual, that will allow her to activate one of her altars. So we bank those and we flip that over. So she has an active one now and war can't do anything. Back to the draw phase. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Uh, okay. So what do we have here? We have the Pagan. Mm -hmm. We have the Adventurer. We have the Cleric. We have another Adventurer. And we have a Fanatic. So I think I am going to take the Cleric. No. What do I want to take? Mm. <sighs> um, I'll take the Fanatic. And none of these are loyal followers. So Cleric, Pagan, Adventurer, Adventurer. Ancient God goes first. Cleric, Daemonesses, and Wizards. Abilities have no effect. This is another Worshipper. This only lasted... The Abomination only lasted for one round. So we'll set that there. The cleric is now worshiping. All right. <laughs> Me next. When performing a ritual, the fanatic counts as two ritual cards. You can see that. So since I only need two rituals, I can discard that and gain another shrine. I now have max shrines. You can only have three. I have all three. <laughs> I just need to activate some of these altars, man. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> so the pagan, 
Choose a realm, destroy all its inactive altars. Going counterclockwise, starting with the NPC god realms, that is the ancient god, but he has protection against pagans. I'm... Oh. Oh. One, two, three, four. I might lose this one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> now we come over to the adventurer. Add one inactive altar to your realm. So she gets a inactive altar. And then the god of war also has an adventurer. So he gets an inactive altar. This isn't going well for me, guys. I'm not going to lie. So now we come down to the construction phase. What do we got? We have a ritual and a non-ritual. That these can be used to activate an altar. So we discard those. Activate one of his altars for the first time since the start of the game. Nothing can be done here. Absolutely nothing can be done here. Nothing can be done there. Nothing can be done there. Yoy. Okay. <laughs> How many pagan cards are there? I'm not even sure. Okay, there are three pagan cards. One of the things that I like about this, I don't know if you can see that, I hope that focuses in, that if you look at the card right here, not only does it tell you what to do, but there's a little number right there like this is a number three, that means there's three of these cards in the deck. It kind of gives you an idea of how rare the card is within the deck. So I think two pagan cards have been played already, and I think I've been the recipient of both of them. So I think I know what I'm going to do this round. So we draw five more cards. Two, three, four, five. Whole bunch of priestesses, a bard, a cleric, and an oracle. <laughs> so I think I'm going to take the bard. None of these are loyal followers, so it's going to go priestess, priestess, cleric, oracle. Starting with the Ancient God, discard the Priestess card, activate this altar, come down to me. I'm going to hold on to that card. I'm going to play a Berserker card, and I'm going to steal protection from Pagans from the Ancient God, because I'm not going through that again. There's only one more card, but I am not going to be the recipient again if that happens. We have a Priestess card down here for the Goddess of Death. That has to go into the hand because she can't play it right now. Then we come over to the Goddess of Love with a Cleric, which is a Worshipper, which protects her against demons and wizards. And then up here we have the Oracle card for the God of War that this says, at the beginning of each player's turn, you may look at the top card of the draw deck. That doesn't really do anything, so this is just going to go into War's hand. Okay? So, now we're into the construction phase. Can't do anything. Um... Can't do anything? Yeah. Yeah. Can't do anything. I definitely can't do anything. She's at a stalemate, but he has one ritual, one non-ritual, and he can discard both of those and activate his shrine, and he is back in the lead. Go war. All right. That is the construction round. Drawing five, one, two, three, four, five. Drawing five, let's take a look at this. Ha ha, pagan. Okay, <laughs> but I have nothing. Ugh. Priestess, tempter. Um, priestess and priestess. So we have a bunch of priestess cards. There are no inactive shrines on here. <laughs> okay, I am going to take the Tempter, yeah, and so that means Pagan, Priestess, Priestess, Priestess. 
he goes first. Um, choose a realm, destroy all its inactive altars. The only one with inactive altars is love, so that one gets destroyed. Come down to me, choose a god, take a priestess card from their hand and add it to your hand. Return the tempter card to your own hand. Okay. The art on these is phenomenal. I really, really dig the art on these things. So I'm going to take the Priestess card from the Goddess of Death, put it into my hand. I now have three cards in my hand. We come up to Death, Priestess card, can't do anything. That goes back into her hand. Priestess card, can't do anything, goes back into her hand. Same thing with War, Priestess card, back into his hand. A whole lot of nothing is going to happen during the construction phase because nobody can do anything. <laughs> can I? No. Shazbat. All right, here we go. Five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. It looks like this game may go the distance because once the deck goes down and there's no more cards to draw, we have to figure out by shrines and altars who won. And right now, it's pretty much war. We have the Fanatic, we have the Adventurer, we have the Wizard, we have the Priestess, and we have the Oracle. I am taking the Wizard. And that means none of these are loyal followers. So Ancient God gets the Fanatic, Adventurer, Priestess, Oracle. When performing a ritual, the Fanatic counts as two ritual cards. The Ancient God will put that in his hand. The Adventurer for the Goddess of Death. Add one inactive altar to your realm. So she gets an altar back. Wait, no. I know, I know. It's not going to matter, but I want to do it this way. <laughs> he goes first, then I go. I'm playing the Wizard card. Destroy, choose a God, destroy one of their active altars, and add one inactive altar to your realm. Guess who's getting hit? That would be this guy. And I have an, one altar. One! <laughs> then Death plays her adventurer. She gets an inactive altar. Goddess of Love has a priestess. Can't do anything with it. We're setting it there. And then the Oracle, once again, at the beginning of each player's turn, you may look at the top card and draw. You may look at the top card of the draw deck. So... Once again, like it doesn't really do anything, but that will go into his hand. So now we have the construction phase where actually I feel like there is some stuff that can happen here. Because first of all, starting with the ancient god, oh no, he needs three. So that only counts as two. He doesn't get to do anything. Um, the goddess of death can play her priestess card, activate this altar. Oh man, she only needs one more as well. She only needs one more and she's got this. I can't do anything. Oh, no, wait. I can play this Priestess card and activate an altar. Woohoo! I think that's pretty much my first active, active altar in the game. <laughs> um, for Solitaire, you, the gods can take two cards without ritual icons and sacrifice them for an inactive altar, which is what Love is going to do. Put these two Priestess cards in and get an inactive altar. And then up here, we have a Shrine card and a non-Shrine card. I'm sorry, a Ritual card and a non-Ritual card that would activate an altar, but all of his are active, so he's going to hold on to those. So there's the construction round. Back to me. <laughs> Or back to the draw. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Warrior. Healer. Oh, boy. <laughs> mm. I want... The wizard again. I'm going to take the wizard card. I like that card. This may be a mistake. So we have two healers, a warrior, and a demoness. The warrior goes to war. Demoness goes to death. 
And then we have the two healers that will go to the ancient god and the goddess of love. So coming back up to the ancient god, the healer, take up to three priestesses, car, priestesses from the discarded pile and add them to your hand. So one, two, three, right off the top. There's that. This gets discarded. Now it's my turn. Choose a god, destroy one of their active altars, and add one inactive altar to your realm. Boom. Do I want to do that? No. No, I want to do this. Because she has a shrine. And so I get that. Now it's her turn. In case you forgot, each opposing god with at least two cards in hand chooses and discards one of them. Take one from the discarded cards and add it to your hand. So, loyal follower card goes back into the hand. And he has to discard two cards, so he will discard the two priestesses. There is a way to figure out how cards get discarded. That's, um, what is it? When an opposing god must discard a card, the player follows the order of priority. First, he discards without the ritual icon, then ritual icon cards, then follower cards, and finally destroys, act, destroys altars. So since these do not have um, ritual icons on them, these are the first two that get discarded for the ancient god. For me, it's the tempter and the bard. <laughs> um, she only has the one. Oh, no, wait, but she has protection from demonesses because of that card. So she's good. And then one ritual, one non-ritual, one ritual. All of those get discarded. So those go into the stack. Now we come over to love, healer, take up to three priestesses from the discard pile. So he, she's going to get the priestesses that the ancient god just discarded. Two, and there's three. Three priestesses, the healer gets discarded, and now we jump to the warrior, which you all know this one. The opposing gods choose to discard one card from their hand or in play. If there are no cards to discard, deactivate an altar. And since it's war playing this card, it has double the effect. So two cards are discarded. Two cards are discarded. Two cards are discarded. Once again, thankfully, I am safe from that. And the loyal follower goes back into his hand. Construction phase. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. Can't do anything. She can sacrifice a priestess and activate this altar. Can't do anything. Draw phase. There's only one, two, three, four. Last round. Let's see who wins. All right. Oh, wow. All right, I'm going to take the priestess. The demoness goes to the goddess of death. The seer goes to the goddess of love. The warrior goes to the god of war. And the fanatic goes to the ancient god, which this is just going to get set to the side because he can't really do anything with that. Discard. Activate my altar. Once again, the demoness... Each opposing god with at least two cards in hand chooses and discards one of them. Take one from the discarded hand and add it to your own. Doesn't have at least two cards, doesn't have at least two cards, doesn't have... So this is, this is ineffective. That will go there. Plus she's safe from demonesses anyway. The seer. Choose a god, look at their hand of cards, and choose one card. Add this to your hand. <laughs> what will help her more? This. And then the warrior. Now the pain comes. Deactivate two altars. One, two. Lose the card. Deactivate an altar. 
I'm protected. Lose two cards. Goes into the hand. Nothing in the construction round. Nothing in the construction round. Nothing in the construction round. Um, can discard those. Add an inactive altar. And that's the end. Now we have to figure out who won. I'm pretty sure it's going to be love right here. Let me consult the rules and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I had to go back to the standard rules to figure out who won. And while I thought it was going to be the goddess of love, I may be wrong right here because the number of altars discovered and activated will depend on the shrines built, but it's mandatory to build at least one shrine to win the game. So war and the ancient god are right out. So the only contenders are actually the goddess of love, the goddess of death, and the god of chaos, myself. Now, if the player builds one shrine, he will need four altars. So the goddess of death has built one shrine, but doesn't have four active altars. The goddess of love has only built one shrine, almost has four active altars. If a player builds two shrines, they will need three active altars, and so on. So the next one would be, if a player has three shrines, they would only need two active altars, which I have one, two, three shrines and two active altars. Believe it or not, I have won the hand of solitaire, <laughs> which surprises me to no end, but I kind of get why now you can pick all of these shrines. What's, inter what's interesting to me about this is also there is a god in one of the expansion packs. I can't remember which one it is, but there's a god in one of the expansion packs that um, can build up to five shrines. So with five shrines, you don't need any active altars. So that's, that's interesting to me. But that is solitaire. Like I said, just going over the basic rules and the solitaire rules for the expansion pack, one must prevail. There is a huge, huge difference between the way the rules play out, which is why I cannot wait until Uncle Britt gets here and me and him can play. I'm really looking forward to this. I think this is a really fun game. And I think with the Pro Pilgrim's Road rules thrown into it, and playing against somebody else and each of us having uh, a hand and it being more strategy based. This is obviously very luck based, just like a regular game of solitaire. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how this plays out once there's, you know, a human on each side of the table and there's strategy involved. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this format. I know I need to change this area up. I know um, I need to figure out some better lighting for this but let me know what you think of this i kind of wanted to do this like i said just to try something different just to put something different out there like game night playlist so that's where this is going to be i do hope you enjoyed this please remember to do all the youtube things like comment subscribe down below check me out on coffee where for one dollar a month you can get advanced access access to uh, exclusive content and other member bonuses. And until next time, my friends, play well, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.